What's up guys, and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescue. Today, we're going to try and tackle a bloat drone the easy way. So this model was actually sent in by a subscriber by the name of Tim K. So thank you very much, Tim, for being part of this channel and helping build this awesome library of pretty eclectic models. If you too want to get in on the action and hopefully have a video that I can do on this channel, or you're looking for something else, check in the description box below. I have all the details on how that works. All right, let's get started on this super sweet bloat drone. So this miniature has a little bit of an interesting history. Now, I've done several videos for a company called WarpfireMinis.com. And this video isn't sponsored by them in any way. But, you know, I was talking about their boxes and several of you guys have signed up and gotten boxes. So I get a message from Tim talking about how one of the boxes he got only included this particular bloat drone and that was supposed to be the monthly crate now that sounded a little weird to me so i asked him to contact them and they got back relatively quickly and said that they had made a mistake and that they sent this box which was supposed to go to somebody else to him instead so they sent him a new crate which i thought was pretty awesome and pretty great customer service so again, this isn't sponsored, but I just thought that was really cool of them. And it's something that I look for in companies that, you know, I want to deal with. The other awesome aspect of that is that they also let him keep this bloat drone. Now, I assume they sent another one to whoever was supposed to get this, but I don't know the rest of the story. But, you know, considering how they acted for this particular transaction, I would say they probably did. And of course, since Tim wasn't looking to get a blow drone, he shipped it forward to me to see what I would do with it. So let's get started. Now the paint job isn't too terrible or thick, and there's some new plastic that Tim had sent, the, the weapons that weren't attached. So I just put everything together, cleaned it up, and I'm just gonna shoot this with some black primer. So what we're looking to accomplish with this video is to try and show how to use different techniques to speed up your painting. The thing to remember is that everyone's skill level is a little bit different. We're all in different places. So when I say I finished this model in a little over two and a half hours, it's kind of arbitrary. It might take you an hour and a half or it might take you six hours either way. The ideas behind what I'm trying to show are to hopefully help you speed up. So right now we're just shooting white in all of the areas that are eventually going to take color. And the whole idea behind that is that white is going to be the base. We're going to kind of create like a gray scale and then come back with a color to tint that and filter it. And then we're going to come in with the airbrush again with Liquitex's Burnt Umber. Now we're gonna cover all of the areas that are pretty much gonna be metallic, and we're not gonna worry about overspray. The whole idea is to put a lot of colors all throughout the model and give a really interesting look to each piece. So now that our metals are done with a nice glossy coat of Burnt Umber, we're gonna come back over the top of these metallics with a dry brush of Retributor Armor. Now, because we're using a very dark brown on these blacks, this Retributor Armor dry brush is gonna give us a kind of a coppery look. The idea of using an ink to kind of base coat before we dry brush is that the inks are glossy like a metallic. 
So any places that you don't hit are just going to look like metal shadows. We're going to come in with some purple ink through the airbrush to give a little bit more variation to our metallics. Now, I'm not trying to shoot in the shadows or the highlights. I'm just trying to go in the middle, you know, of each of these metallic pieces. That's just going to add a little bit more interest overall. And once again, we're not too worried about overspray. We're going to get this onto some of our white ink. But in the overall scheme of what we're trying to accomplish, this is just going to give a lot more interest to those areas when we start to filter everything. Now I'm going to come in with some dark green and do kind of the same thing, but we're going to shoot for more of the highlight points. So anything, you know, in the upper area, because we're going to eventually come back and kind of put a filter over even these colors so that all of this metal is just kind of blended together. So, in complete transparency, I just took a class when I went to the Las Vegas Open last week. And the class was on painting large, you know, monsterish type models. And a lot of these techniques were used. The class was put on by CK Studios, and the teacher was Caleb Wisenbach. It was a fantastic class, and I knew I was going to have to share this with everyone. Now again, being completely open and transparent, I'm not really showing this in the way that he did it in the class. You know, this is a best approximation of the things that I can remember from, you know, an almost five hour long session. The thing that I took away was that putting color variation into your metallics and your undercoats just gives a more interesting look to your model. So that's really what we're shooting for right now. So now that we laid down some more burnt umber into those shadows on the metallics, we're gonna come back in with some of this Vallejo Metal Color Aluminum and dry brush that all over the metallics. Now what we're gonna accomplish by doing this is bringing all of those colors together, making them look like they're part of the same piece. And we're really gonna brighten up a lot of these metals. The whole thing is you can kind of do this as much or as little as you want. So if you want it to be a little more coppery, then do a little bit less of the silver. Either way, this is kind of a dry brush filter. And because we're shooting for a more grim dark look, that would not be complete without AK Interactive's streaking grime. So I'm going to take this and liberally coat the entire front panel of this drone. <clears throat> Contrast. What not to do? Huh. Yep. So, that thing that I said I wouldn't do again, I, I totally did it again. The terrible, terrible idea. Do not put contrast paints over white ink. It will immediately tear through that white ink and it will be completely pointless. I don't know why I didn't remember this, but you know, mistakes happen. And after I'm done making a horrible mess of the back end of this drone, we're going to have to wait and let that dry. No worries though. We're just going to come back later and fix it. Now that our AK Interactive streaking grime is set up just a little bit, we're gonna come back with a pretty old crappy dry brush. And I'm gonna start to just take away some of that and kind of stipple and blend and create some texture. Now, eventually what we're gonna wanna do is take some of this away and reveal some of those colors that we laid down that are underneath that. But for now, I just wanna make a little bit of texture and some streaks and just kind of give it an interesting look. This is kind of part of the overall thing with making this really fast is that you're putting very little effort and just kind of playing around, but you're getting a really cool, interesting look. What this also means is that 
every single time you do something like this, it's going to be a little bit different. And you're really just using this model or a model as kind of a canvas to just tell a different story each time. So in this case, it's kind of battle worn and gross. And there's some scratches down the side that are kind of this sickly green color. So I want to emphasize that a little more uncover this you know nurgle mark on his forehead that kind of thing and just make a lot of dirty streaks all over the best part about doing this is that you can kind of just play around for as long as you want apply more take away you know it kind of all looks really good Now coming in with some Scale 75's Harvester Flesh. I'm going to take care of all of the little pipes that are kind of covered in this nasty skin and start to cover up that disgusting contrast mess that I made earlier. If I hadn't made this mistake and just, you know, thrown contrast paint over that white ink, we probably would have actually gotten this done a lot quicker. But we all make mistakes and, you know, we try our best to learn from them. Hopefully the next time, the next round, I will remember this day. So one of the major things to remember when trying to essentially speed paint a model is that you want to have a focal point. So using some of this crimson ink and then eventually going over that with some of this red orange, we're going to create a really nice glowing eye effect on the front of this drone. So I'm going to layer over that lens with this red and then I'm going to come back with the red orange and kind of lightly go around the entire area. What this is really going to do is give us a nice focal point. It's going to do something that looks more difficult than it kind of is making our model look better. And it's going to offset from some of our other colors, our purples and our greens and give more contrast. So last week I showed how to make a cool little reflection using a ball stylus. This week I'm going to change it up and show you with the back of a normal paintbrush. Now I dip the end in and get a variety of different sizes. So I'm picking the size I want by testing it out on a piece of paper. So dotting it down until I know it's the size that I want and then placing it right on the lens. So now that we have our nice flesh tones all established and we've done some variation using different inks to give more interest, we're gonna come back in with some Drukey Violet a little bit watered down and just cover all of the skin and any of the pipes or any, any place where there is skin. After that's dried, we're gonna come back in with Scale 75's Harvester Flesh and start to add some texture and highlight back up. You may have noticed that the background color has changed to white. Now, in all honesty, I just was curious to see which you guys like better. So please let me know down in the comments if you prefer the normal black background or if you would rather see these minis on white. All I'm really doing with this harvester flesh is going in and kind of giving small highlights to, you know, areas where say the skin meets the metal right on the edges of those. I'm doing some striations along these little tentacles and all the pipes and we're just trying to add some texture. Since we're mostly shooting for speed on this one, you can pretty much skip this step, but I really like the way that this looks, so I'm gonna go for it. Coming in with Vallejo White, we are gonna do some more highlighting on our focal points. Starting off with this lens, we're gonna edge highlight kind of around the edge, and it's gonna give a little bit more reflective look from that light. We're also gonna place this as an edge highlight around that mark of Nurgle since it's mostly a white color anyways. And I'm gonna do a little bit more down the center 
which is really going to draw your eye into the middle of this model and down toward that lens. We're going to get to the reveal in just one second and then a quick message before a little bit of extra footage. Thank you again, Tim. This is a fantastic model. I'm pretty happy that the mistake from Warpfire happened because now I get to paint this sweet model. And it was super enjoyable, man. So thank you for the support. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you liked something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, a huge thank you to Tim K. This video would not have been possible without the support from viewers like you. Also, don't forget that if you would like to see still photos of pretty much all of the work that I do on this channel, head on over to Instagram at eBay Miniature Rescues. And once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. Got my big gold. Gotta have one. Ooh. Look at this space wolf. That's that's pretty sweet. Ooh. That's some spiky stuff. I should probably paint this. Maybe next week. All right, bye.